I, Justin, take thee, Edward, to be my husband. I, Justin, take thee, Edward, to be my husband. To be my husband. <laughs> I totally got this. Just my idea of a perfect, uh, perfect marriage, perfect wedding, I guess. And it felt like, you know, I just really wanted to uh, see this person every day. I want to um, sleep with this person every night. You know, I want to see him every morning, and uh, I want to spend most of the time. You know. Well, growing up, I I never thought for a minute that I would have the opportunity to get married. It was something that my friends um, and everybody around me sort of just took for granted as something that they didn't even have to think about. And so we had a private ceremony. Former State Senator Linda Valentino officiated. We just literally had it in her living room. Um, and it was nice. It was just us, my parents. It wasn't a big hun hundreds of different individuals. It was just us and we made it about us. Uh, we had purple lips for days. Luckily, somebody baked us a cake. But it, it, I, I thought it was extra special because, again, never thought I could do it. And when it actually happened, it was one of those things where, what's all the fuss about? You know, we were able to do something like everybody else. We were treated like everybody else. It just was a good feeling. I think my first impression, it was really, really positive. And I think just seeing all the things that, you know, he does was really was just kind of amazed me um, I, I don't think I have ever seen anyone to be so involved at the same time he was really um, he was really open and he was really honest I think and that that's one thing that I was I really you know I do really value in, in people I do really value you know how genuine the person is, how you know authentic the person is, and really you know fun to have time with. My first impression of Edward would be just a kind-hearted spirit. I feel like when he enters a room, it just yeah he's shy, yes he's reserved, but his smile just brightens up your day, and you can really tell you know, what makes a human tick when you look somebody in the eye. And when I look Edward in the eye, I know he cares about other people, even people he doesn't know. He cares about the environment, he cares about animals, he cares about his role in society. And that drew me into him, you know. Uh, yes, I'm a sucker for accents, but aside from that, I, I connect with him on a very human level. So when I was in Russia, um, I, I mean, I, I kind of knew for a while, but it was really, really difficult to be open about anything. Um, I've been bullied in school, I've been bullied in, uh, um, in, in college, and it's it just it's really difficult. And I think the worst part of it is that you don't, you know, you become a victim without knowing why you've been targeted. You don't know what's you know what's wrong with me why I'm this way I mean even relatives didn't didn't like because I acted differently and I think that that was a my big incentive just to be somewhere else you know not stay in my country and try to get out and explore explore the world and see maybe I'll fit with some other society maybe I'll fit in another country just because of all of those things that I had to overcome and growing up it always made me feel less than, felt different from the crowd. I never felt connected to my peers of, of my same age because I always just felt different. Um, and for the longest time I couldn't articulate, I couldn't pinpoint why I felt different. And it wasn't until later in middle school, even, in even high school, where I started to put the pieces together. Um, but it was still difficult. Um, I didn't really want to accept things about my own personal life. I didn't want to accept me. When society consistently told me that I wasn't good enough, that people like me can't have the right to get married, can't give blood, you know, some of those things, it, it, it starts to erode at you. It starts to eat away at your soul. And when every day in school I would be bullied in one form or fashion or another, people would ask me, am I gay? And, and of course, at the time, I, I didn't even know myself, but they didn't ask the question because they were curious. They asked the question because out of spite, out of 
out of ridicule. When I told my parents that um, that I'm gay, I think it was um, it was a quite a journey. It was definitely difficult for my parents, I think, to accept more for my, my father, I think, than for my mom. And um, uh, it did take t some time. I mean, I did tell them even before I, I knew Justin, so it did take a lot of time for them to process the information. But they were worried. They were said, "Well, you know, I don't think I don't think you'll be able to be there, and I think people will hate that, and people will just, you know." beat you or something, I think my mom was projecting the fact that when I was in school, it, the way, the, how, how many issues I had, you know, I was always bullied and my mom assumed that I'm just going to be automatically bullied here in this country. So I think that was first, she was just concerned. She was really concerned about my health being, you know, if I can, can be here and not, you know, what's going to happen to me. She's just so far away and when your son is far away from your mother, I think she was just really concerned. When my mom met Justin, it was it was easier than you can think of. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Because <laughs> when when she met him, when she saw first time him on Skype, I think she was really um, relieved. I think that's the word to if, word to describe it. She was really relieved, and after that, I think she just she was just really uh, she never worried. He grounds me. He gives me a place, a solid foundation for me to be able to do the things that I do every day. I would not be able to volunteer as much. I would not be able to work as much. I would not be able to advocate as much if I didn't have somebody at home that just had my back, that um, I can bounce ideas off of, that I could um, you know, know when I pick up the phone or I text or, or whatever, that he's there um, and is a relentless supporter of me. Like, he will just go to bat for me. Um, and, and to have a partner like that, to have a husband like that, to have a human being with you on this journey is, is, is just something special and something to value. I think just being with him kind of not just motivated me, but it, it just uh, it inspired me to do a lot of things, you know? An average day for us is we wake up early in the morning, we go to Saco Sport and Fitness um, and exercise. We come back. I make breakfast, he takes a shower, I then take a shower, he eats breakfast, so he can go off to work. Um, both of us work multiple jobs, you know, my husband works as a professor, my husband also works as an environmental engineer, he's on several boards and commissions. I work multiple jobs uh, besides my role in the legislature, uh, and then we volunteer like crazy in the community because that's something that we're both passionate about. So when we come home, you know, one of us is making dinner, usually I'm making dinner, um, you know, and then when we get 10 minutes to ourselves to just be in the moment, and then we work on stuff at night. We, he grades papers, I work on either marketing work for a client or our business, um, or I'm working with constituents on the phone uh, late at night. But that's an average day. I mean, we, we're, we're nothing special. We, we do things like just like everybody else. Um, you know, we do the same chores as everybody else. We do the dishes, we mow the lawn, we take care of our, our house. I, I point that out because it's really easy to put us in a box that, you know, uh, that's just the gay couple or, or, or whatever phrase or, or terminology people use. But we're just like everybody else. We have the same wants and needs. We have uh, this, the same schedule of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We volunteer a lot at, you know, one of the examples would be in Thanksgiving, you know. We serve people with the meal, those people who, you know, who are, you know, who are unfortunate, who can't have meal on Thanksgiving Day. And I think just for anyone who would want to, you know, have a nice time with people in community, it doesn't have to be about that. Um, we've. We've, we've been on a lot of different events. We organized a lot of events in Saku and all of them really, really fun. You know, it's not just you put a lot of work. You also have a lot of fun. You enjoy your time. You get to know a lot of different people and um, you get to really like the community. Being gay is not an abstract. It's not a movement. It's not a parade or a flag. It's, it's my everyday life. It's my love for my husband.
No. 